So let me just tell you about this nomination. The Department of Chemistry put together a packet displaying that they, as a department, met and documented fulfillment of the criteria for our Violet Haas Award. Specifically, in 1975, there was not a single woman serving as a tenure-track professor. Today, there are 14 women professors, including three distinguished professors among the four full professors who are women. The department has been recognized by the American Chemical Society during recent years as either number one or number two in the percentage of tenure-track women faculty. Moreover, 41% of graduate student chemists, or 137 students, are women. The department, as you can see, gives credit to the leadership of its women faculty, some of whom we'll hear about in a few moments. However, it isn't simply the numbers, the numbers or the leadership roles that have set the Department of Chemistry apart. Women are in key positions within the department, across the campus, as entrepreneurs, as members of President Daniel's signature programs, as advisory board members, as drivers of curriculum and engagement changes, as well as notable accomplishments in discovery. The department has worked toward dual career hiring and retention, among other efforts. In other words, it is the conscious effort to practice diversity and inclusion in all efforts and to be inspired by past and future women in science that prompted both the nomination and the award. As one letter writer concluded, the changes that have occurred in the past four decades in providing an inclusive environment for female faculty members are most impressive. This culture change could not be made by only a handful of people, but rather the entire department had to be committed to changing its attitudes and behavior said another who was a graduate student in the 1980s. I assumed that gender balance issues would have vanished at most academic institutions around the country. But this is not the case. Recruiting and retaining women requires incredible effort, and my current department uses Purdue as one example of a department that has won the battle and thrown back uh, and shown a cohesive and unflagging strategy with buy-in from colleagues, uh, and that buy-in can pay great dividends. She concludes, I applaud Purdue chemistry, as should we all. <laughs> When we got the notification of this award, um, there was joyous celebration throughout the, the department. Um, as department head, I'm just pleased and honored to accept this Violet House Award. Very nice. <laughs> Purdue was absolutely the most welcoming place I seen for women in all the departments I interviewed at. And it wasn't just because of the women, it was also because of the men. Um, and the whole environment was incredibly welcoming. I remember having dinner with Phil Lau and thinking, oh, this is a great place for women, you know. <laughs> Phil has always been a great champion of, of women, especially in, in my biochem division. But I have to think, because when I got here, it felt like there was no difference. If you were a man or a woman, you, they, they just wanted everyone to succeed. And it wasn't until I went to other departments when I was interviewing, I'm like, wow, I saw no other women in two days. Or they, you know, found one that they, they brought out for <laughs> <laughs> a special occasion. <laughs> and so Purdue was a, a striking difference, and that was back in 2000. Um, and I think we've, we've, we've grown into that and made it even better. And some of our, our, our pioneers are here. 
And um, I think we all uh, owe a debt of gratitude to the people who paved the way. And I stand on the shoulders of giants. And <laughs> one of those giants I will <laughs> introduce now is Jean Shibaleski. I'm the Alex Watson Kramer Distinguished Professor. Alex Watson Kramer was the first woman to get her PhD in the chemistry department in 1935. Uh, it was a long time before any women entered the, the department as faculty members, but Manubina was our first research active faculty member. She started at Purdue in 1979. Manu is retired now, she's not here, but I thought I'd just tell you a few words from Manu just to set the tone of what things were like in 1979. <laughs> She commented, after my arrival to Purdue at the first departmental faculty meeting, I was startled to find I was the only woman in that room. <laughs> Nonetheless, I felt very much at home and began to make many friends with whom I shared research interests and learned about theirs. Particularly very early on, Professor Harry Morrison, who was our head and then dean as well, took me under his wing and became my special and much cherished mentor. When he became the head of our department, he met with every faculty member and asked them about possible concerns. I didn't hesitate to indicate my concern about a general lack of female faculty in the department. After some brainstorming and a few meetings, he realized that it was important to have a woman to serve on the faculty recruitment committee. And so uh, that beginning of Manu talking to Harry Morrison uh, when there was only one woman faculty member, and then in 1989 and 1990, I came, Hilda Kentima came, and Mary Knockley, who's retired, came, and so there were four of us and it was a bit of a burden in the beginning for all of us to be on recruiting committees, but we took that on as a challenge. And also with the wonderful male colleagues that we had, we were able to double those numbers, as Tim was saying. In 10 years, we doubled. In 10 more years, we doubled again. And, uh, and so I think that it's, it's a real testament, not only to the women's department, but also all of our colleagues, male and female. And also, uh, we have to thank our staff and uh, for all the support that they provide to us as well. So thanks. Thank you. I've introduced myself, Mary Wood, the first and distinguished professor, and uh, I congratulate the department on this very well-deserved honor. I mentioned before I was a grad student here starting in 1974, and the world was very different then. Uh, but I, I think the world is quite different from this department. <laughs> Why this department is so distinguished in getting this award. I've spent most of my career at quite a variety of other institutions. And one of the things, I think the one thing I wanted to say that will resonate with, with uh, women in the audience in particular is that at other places, you'll often hear that they have to choose between diversity and quality. And you never hear that at Purdue. You just never hear that you choose between the two. And I'm a member of the Division of Analytical Chemistry, which is the number one ranked analytical chemistry division in the country. And the division is almost half women. And there's no other analytical division in the country that comes even close to that. And so you know, diversity and quality are not, not only not mutually exclusive, but in this case, higher diversity is, is certainly higher quality. I'm I was actually the second female faculty member hired in the chemistry department. So I've seen the department with uh, very few females and eventually a lot of a lot of females came. So an interesting transition. So when I came I was the not just the second female faculty member but the first female in the analytical division. And that was very interesting because it turned out that they became very careful in what they said in the meetings because they were afraid they would hurt my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> so it turned out I was the one who made the most outrageous statements. <laughs> 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 and uh, so I came from Finland and I instantly, I mean in here, I, was, I always felt that I was treated much better with much less discrimination, believe or not, because Finland, uh, so Finland is the first country in the world to allow women to vote. And my thinking is they decided that's it, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's been really easy to progress here. And um, so I've advised and supported many female students and young faculty members over the years, 
and it turned out, at least in the very beginning, is, is the female students who wanted to continue professionally and make, maybe become academics, uh, the biggest pressure for them not to do it came from their own society or their culture. So it was almost never the husband or boyfriend who was against this. It was just the general expectations that made it really hard for these women to decide that they don't stay home and raise children. And I met some really brave young women who went against everything they knew to pursue careers. So it's lovely that now it's so much easier, and it's not really viewed as a, as a terrible <laughs> to actually consider your career. Of course, we have so many successful female faculty now in chemistry, a lot of great um, role models.